Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I welcome you to this wonderful week. Praise God. Now listen, the Spirit of God is moving on the earth. He is moving in our nation like never before. He is bringing into fulfillment the things that he has said before. Praise God. So let him that have eyes to see, see. And let him that has ears to hear, hear. You know, God has spoken a lot about our nation. And we are actually experiencing the things that he has said. God had spoken about a kind of a revolution that would take place in our nation. And he said it's going to be engineered by the youths. And you are seeing that taking place even right now. You know, you, you may not understand what is going on. You may just be looking at it on the surface or, or in the physical. You may be looking around and saying, oh, all these people protesting, can't they just stop? Look at what is going on and look at what is going on. Now, if, if that's all, you know, now some of you can even be looking at what's going on and you're excited, wow! But you're still looking at it from the physical standpoint. But let me tell you the truth. Before things take place in the physical, they have been concluded, concluded in the realm of the spirit. And also, I've always told you this. There is nothing that takes place on earth that God does not approve of. Now, just think about it. Do you think we pray and say, oh God, something is happening in our nation. And God said, oh, really? Michael? Go and look at what's going on in their nation. Think that's what's going on? You see, those that know the mind of God have seen the end of the matter already. So when we, when we see things taking place, we are just waiting. And, and, and that's why, you see, Joel prophesied, and Jesus also said it. When Joel talked about the Holy Spirit coming upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters prophesying, your, your young men shall see visions. Now, Jesus said also that when the Holy Ghost comes, he will show you things to come. You ought to take advantage of the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you something. This is not the time to even begin to pray and be asking God, what is going on? If you didn't know already, you know, that's how, when we talk about the coming of the Lord, that's exactly how it's going to happen. See, some people will be taken on our ways, but some who have already been walking with him and, and following his leadership, receiving revelations and vision, hearing his voice. It's not going to be like a thief in the night like the Bible said. So we see what's going on and we understand perfectly what God is doing. And this is what I'll say to everyone. Be calm. You know, this is where you see, when, when Moses said to the children of Israel, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. God is doing something in our nation. And let me tell you something, I bless him for it. Father, I just bless you for Nigeria. I bless you for what you're doing in our nation. It's a new thing. And you are in charge of it. Thank you for the activities of angels even now around our nation. For the angels of God have set the boundaries, the borders of this protest. And they are saying to it that it doesn't cross the line that it ought not to cross. So, Father, we thank you. It is not going to destroy our nation, but it's making our nation better. It is bringing out the depths and the truths for what you have ordained and proposed for our nation. And Holy Spirit, I ask that you come upon everyone that ought to do anything in this season those that have been that are supposed to come forth with wisdom you supply them with the right wisdom those that also come up with decisions you are supplying them with the right decisions and the courage to take those decisions father we bless you we bless you we pray for everyone in authority even in this season even from the president lord to every decision maker down to every family head, Lord. I declare in this season, they, are, they come under the influence of your spirit to carry out decisions that are in line with your purpose and your will. 
Nigeria is getting better. And Lord, you promised this many years ago, Lord. And even recently, you reminded us that you are bringing forth a change in our nation and you are going to do it by yourself. And no man will take the glory for this. Strengthen the young people, O oh Lord. Give them the courage to act right and act sensibly, Lord. Keep evil away from every one of them. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that at the end of it, Lord, the young, the old, everyone in authority, everyone on the streets will know that you have passed through our nation. Hallelujah. Not just passing through to go away, but you are making this place a dwelling place of your kingdom. For you remember all the truths that have gone forth from our nation into the ends of the earth. And in this season, Lord, you are remembering Nigeria for her time of rest, her time of change, her time of comfort has come. And therefore the sound has gone out from the heavens already. Satan has no hand in this. He has no hand in what is going on right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you praise. For indeed in Nigeria, Jesus is being exalted. And he is Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Listen. Listen. If you can pray, the kind of prayer you should be praying now is a prayer of thanksgiving and a prayer of dedicating and rededicating yourself to the Lord. Why? Because he's doing a new thing and he's speaking up. See, when God was he knows how to raise people from anywhere to do his work. But you see, it is not because you did the work you will receive the inheritance. The inheritance is only for the children. Now I want you to understand what I'm saying. The inheritance is for the children. The workers will be paid their wages, but the inheritance is to the children. So if you are not a child of God, you may join them to protest. You may, you may make the noise. You may be the forefront, you know, the one at the forefront doing all the work. But you see, when it's time for the inheritance to be given, you will not be considered if you have not put yourself in place as a child. And let me tell you something. A child will not seek to destroy his own house. A child will seek to defend his house. See the difference? So children will not go rioting and to destroy their nation. Children will insist that the repair that is needed to be done, be done. And they will hold those responsible for it. You see, that's why the Bible says, blessed is the man who has his quiver full of children. Nigeria is a nation that is full of young people. It says they shall answer the enemy at the gates. You know what's going on right now? The sons and children of Nigeria are rising up to answer the enemy at the gates. That's what they are doing. That's what they are doing. And that's why, you see, you see, if you're a watchman, your prayer is always that God will guide them. God will guide their minds, guide their hearts. That they don't fall out of line. Because in the midst of this, there are those who are not children. There are those ones who come and seek to destroy. But children will maintain. So children, it is time we answer the enemy at the gate. Praise God. And get him out of our nation. Praise God. And it's the truth. Thank you. He that has here, ear to hear, let him hear. I have, I have a lot to say, but no, let's, let's just go into the truth of what God has commanded us to do. Oh, we bless you, Lord. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. So, so we've been dealing with you know, life lessons from the Bible, life lessons from the scripture. Now, I want to read the scripture we started from so that you understand exactly what we are doing. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. 
Romans 15, 4, it says, For whatever things were written before, were written for our learning, that we through the patience and comfort of scriptures might have hope. Everything that was written was written for what one purpose, for our learning. Written with everything you see written in the Bible. They were all written for our learning, for us to learn. Now, what kind of learning is he talking about? He says, so that we, through patience, see, everyone who has walked with God, you will see this ingredient in their life. Patience. There is nobody that has walked with God and inherited the promise that you won't find patience in their lives. Because patience is God's way. See? So he says, so that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now I want to show you something else in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 11. He said, now all these things happen to them as examples. And they were written for our admonition upon whom the end of the ages have come. Take note of that. All these things that happened, they are our example. See? So everything you see documented in scriptures is for our example. So when we look at this, it says, they are written for our admonition, to admonish us, upon whom the end of the ages have come. Do you know what that means? This is the season for the fulfillment of all those shadows that we read about. You know, the Bible says the Old Testament is a shadow. See, shadow doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Shadow means it exists somewhere. So if you find a shadow, it means something exists. You understand what I'm saying? Now, what do you need? All you need is light to come. And when light comes, you will see that thing that was casting in shadow. Because why is this shadow? Because it was blocking the light. You understand what I'm talking about? And that's how you find shadow. Wherever you see shadow, the image that you see as a shadow is actually the exact the image that is blocking the light from reaching out to that place where it's casting a shadow on it. Because if I put my hands like this and I put a light here, you see, it's going to cast, this, these fingers will cast a shadow on the wall. Now, why is it casting a shadow on the wall? It's preventing the light on this side to be seen. So when the Bible says the things, these things, the, the, the things in the Old Testament were a shadow of things to come. What's it saying? It was preventing the light. It was not the real light. It was preventing the light. You understand? Now, what is the real light? Jesus. Jesus. For he said, I am. <laughs> you remember John. John said, in him, first John chapter 1, sorry. In him was life. Talking about Jesus. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And this light shines in darkness and the darkness doesn't comprehend it. See? So Jesus is the light. Praise God. Now when the true light comes, you don't find the shadow. You see the real thing. Praise God. Oh yes. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And that's what I pray for you about. That the true light will hit your spirit. That your eyes will be open to see exactly what the true light is showed. And that true light is Jesus Christ. It is what he tells you that is true. It is what he shows you that is right. So he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Let Jesus be your light today. And that's my prayer for you today. Let Jesus be the, your light through which you see everything that you look at. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll see you tomorrow. Until then, have a fruitful day. Don't look for trouble today. Go about your thing peacefully. God bless you. Bye-bye. <laughs>